It happens to be that the I Ching indicates that the month of February this year is symbolized by the hexagram called unity. So it indicates an opening point for peace and safety and security and good health and progression and advancement. This is the Energy Within Podcast, all about accessing, nurturing, and building your energy and confidence so that you can get unstuck and design your life the way you want. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys, and this is episode 121. And today we are bringing back a previous guest, Jillian Rothschild Scholar, who is the owner of Feng Shui in Motion. We had her on last year just simply talking about what Feng Shui is, how to use it. We had a little bit of discussion about how your birth chart fits in, the eight mansions, which was one of the freebies that you could go and look up and find out. Essentially, I'm not going to describe it (laughs) properly, I'm sure, but like what your best areas and spaces and directions and all that inside your house are, like your lucky directions. So today, because in a few weeks, the Chinese New Year is coming up, Jillian has returned to the podcast to talk to us about the Year of the Tiger and what to expect, what the Year of the Tiger is going to bring, what you want to maybe prepare for, what you might want to avoid. We talk a little bit about going into doing some decluttering and just being really focused on both your space, your energy, and a lot of really interesting angles and notions about the energy for the year. I was really intrigued about the fact that the energy for each month in the next 12 months of the Chinese New Year is going to align with like the next year. So I'll let her describe more about that. I'm really excited to have her back. I think we might make this a yearly thing because this was really exciting and really fascinating. So I hope you find it as enjoyable as I did. Here we go. Well, Jillian, I'm super excited to have you back. Thank you so much. This is really exciting. Thanks for having me. I always enjoy our conversation, so I'm I'm happy to, to be back again. Yeah. So why don't you start off by introducing yourself um, and maybe just explain a little bit about what feng shui is in case someone did not catch our first episode together. Sure, sure. My name is Jillian Rothschild Scholar. I'm the owner and founder, master consultant at Feng Shui in Motion. I help ambitious people who are feeling like there's something a bit off in their life and they're looking for someone they can trust to get clarity, enabling them to confidently move forward and accelerate their results. Um, So feng shui, when people go, oh, what is feng shui? It's a big topic and our time is kind of limited. So just to give you a basic understanding, to me, feng shui is a support system for our lives. When our lives have support through our environment, then it's much easier for us to achieve the things that we want in life, like well-being and abundance, love and happiness. Feng shui translated from Chinese literally means wind and water. So this is an ancient Chinese study of the natural environment that allows us to create harmony and balance so that our lives are supported. And we're really talking about this globally respected art and science. It helps us to know where to find the most vibrant supportive energy spots in our homes And then when you align with that energy, it nourishes and strengthens your own energy so that you can be more vibrant, you can be more confident, more empowered to achieve the things that you want. I remember we talked a little bit about, is it the eight mansions? Am I saying that correctly? Yes, we did talk about eight (laughs) mansions. Yeah, yes. And just, I wanted to throw in a little aside because I looked up to find out what my you know, areas are and things like that. And I realized, and actually right now I'm probably in the wrong spot, that I'm kind of facing the wrong way for all my podcast interviews. <laughs> Time to make a change, right? You can just, just a actually, little change can make a difference. Yeah. And I, and I thought about it and it was interesting because the first time, the first string of interviews I ever did, I actually was facing the complete opposite way. <laughs> and it's just what I did naturally. 
And then later on, I turned just because of the type of equipment that I was then using and how I was setting things up. It was just a convenience thing. But it, yeah. I noticed it felt a little different. And then I also realized that anytime I sit in the kitchen and I'm working on anything at the kitchen table, I face that same direction. Like I choose that chair just naturally without, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah. and that's my direction. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah. For people who don't understand that little bit that we were just talking about on my website, I have um, something called a a BAZI calculator, a B-A-Z-I calculator. And so it's in the services section on the feng shui and motion site. And what someone can do is they can put in their birthday information. Um, It's, it's super, it's free. Um, And so what you do is you put in your birthday information and it calculates for you all kinds of really interesting information based on your birthday. And one of the pieces of information that Carrie's talking about is your lucky directions. It's the eight mansion system and it will tell you if you are an East life group person or a West life group person and what are your four quote lucky directions and your quote unlucky directions. And the idea there is to use the lucky directions more often Mm -hmm. so that you're using energy that's uh, resonates with you essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really eye opening, I think (laughs) thing to take a look at and really fun as well. So we're bringing you back because it's a brand new year. And so there's a little bit of a new focus and they have like the year of the tiger, you said it's for this year. And I know like, I remember in like grade school, we would look up and see like, oh, what, you know, animal are you in all of this? And I think I'm a dog, if I remember okay. correctly, <laughs> but I find this all really interesting. So year of the tiger. And now I ha- I, yes. I can't help it. I have eye of the tiger going through my head. Now I'm sorry. <laughs> Now everybody listening it, to this but... is going to start hearing that earworm in their head too. And someone's going to have to go on to YouTube and like watch the whole thing to get it out. Yeah. So it's not eye of the tiger, it's year of the tiger. So it's, it's the year of the tiger. Yeah. So when in Chinese metaphysics and um, in feng shui, we use something called the Sha calendar, which is like a farmer's calendar, which is a solar calendar. It's fascinatingly accurate. It records the passage of time and is a tool for forecasting. It holds all the information about time presented in four sections, a year, a month, a day, and an hour. And it uses the five elements. And we've talked about the five elements before. You hear it all the time when you talk about feng shui and Chinese metaphysics and qigong and acupuncture. So the five elements are water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. And so this calendar is extremely accurate because it it only vacillates by a few hours each year. So the Chinese New Year is almost always February 4th of every year. Now, somebody might be going, no, no, I heard the Chinese New Year is February 1st this year. That's because it's a lunar calendar. So the lunar calendar is going to vacillate in a different way. It's okay. January. It could be later in February because it's lunar. The solar calendar is very specific. So that's why we use that for feng shui and for these kinds of things. So the energy for the year, when we think about what is the tiger going to bring us, so this is the animal sign, it also has an element attached to it. And so the year is actually known as the water tiger, because when we look at it on the calendar, we see the sign for the Chinese symbol for uh, yang water, which is like the imagery for yang water is like the image of an ocean or, you know, massively strong waves in the sea over the animal sign of tiger, which carries the element of yang wood. Yang wood is sort of like a oak tree, right? And so you might even think about it like the Amazon river with a log floating down the tree, floating down the river, because okay. it's that's what it does, you know, it sort of carries it with you. That's the imagery that we get using Chinese metaphysics. Um, and then with that information, then we try to understand what we can expect energetically as a people, so we can know how to plan our lives and and to be prepared, if you will. Mm-hmm. So the there are some things that are interesting about this particular year. One is that all of the elements carry emotions, and water is associated with the emotion of fear, usually deep emotions. Um, like when the when the ocean is rough, it can be scary and violent, mm-hmm. right? Like passionate, angry, uh, you know, you get really scared when the, you, you, when you get to around o- ocean waves that are that big, you feel real small and you might get a little scared. Yeah. Now the tiger animal sign is that has uh, the uh, emotion of anger. 
So then you start to see somebody who might be feeling fearful and then channeling anger. And so anger management might be an issue that we might see this year. Okay. The animal sign of the tiger itself is known for being very protective and standing in its principles. Um, mm. So you can sort of imagine someone like fiercely defending their values and perspectives due to being afraid of something. And that can be problematic when, when you live in a part of the world where there's issues with money and power, where there's disparate Mm-hmm. living situation. And so there could be an uprising or revolution or something like that in a particular part of the world. I mean, we're talking about emotions that run deep, yeah, deep ocean emotions, if you will. Right. So that's something that I, I want to keep in mind that we might see throughout the year. Um, one, the emotion of grief was very prevalent in 20 and 21 because 2020 was the year of the young metal rat and 21 was the year of the yin metal ox. And so now we're going to be moving away from grief. So the healing can really begin, but underneath grief is sadness. Sure. So the, so many people have passed away from the pandemic. And mm-hmm. I, I imagine that the healing can really begin because we'll be addressing those emotions. One of the other things that's super interesting about this year that I, that I love to bring up to people is that the combination of young water tiger, this is what we call a pillar in Chinese metaphysics because we read it from top to bottom. The pillar is known as a spiritual pillar. There's only 10 of them. And so people who have this in their Chinese astrology chart tend to be interested in spirituality. And I think that what my forecast is what we're going to be dealing with this year is people are sort of walking around feeling like it's an endless night, wondering when it's all going to end, Mm -hmm. feeling like nothing is as it seems. It all just seems so strange. Everything's so mysterious. There's so much that's unknown. And there's no, like, there's no justice. Like, you know, there's just no, there's no end to the, the disparate unfairness of the world. Mm -hmm. And that can be kind of dangerous. Um, And so when that happens, people tend to turn to spirituality. And so this is what we're seeing for the year is that people are likely to be thinking about the, the broader place in the world. What am I, what's my purpose here? How can I be better? How can I do better? When we see this spiritual pillar, we see people who are generally highly sensitive, um, usually operating on heavily on intuition, usually have a high learning ability and some kind of interest in spiritual enlightenment and spiritual practice and having an understanding of human emotions. And so this is what I'm expecting to see is that we're going to see more people interested in spirituality in 22, people caring about each other's emotions, mental health, Mm -hmm. emotional health, and people who want to develop a spiritual practice. So if you already have a spiritual practice, you may want to go deeper. Maybe you want to retreat. Um, if you haven't tried a, a vegetarian or a vegan diet, you might be interested in doing something like that this year. And if you've not developed a spiritual practice or you are not in any kind of faith-based um, structure, you may find yourself turning to that this year to answer the questions of like, what am I doing here? What's my purpose? How can mm-hmm. I be better? How can I? What can I do in the world to make the world a better place? because you're just starting to think about things in a different dimension. That's one of the things that I think is really interesting about this year. Because when we see these pillars, we look for clues about what to expect. Yeah. And this is what I'm kind of expecting to happen. I feel like even leading up to this year, I've seen a lot of that going on already. And people like probably, I mean, a combination, I'm sure, between what's been going on and then also in many situations now having the time <laughs> to really sit there and start thinking like what am i doing with my life am i am i doing what i want to do am i where i want to be am i aligned with what i want to be aligned with all those questions i think are starting to pop up so that yes. makes a lot of sense to me yeah and it pops up now right we're we're already starting to see i mean we're already starting to see a lot of things because it's not a light switch mm-hmm. the energy shifts over time so because the energy is fully set on February 4th, just now in the middle of January, people are starting to feel it. You can start to see things. Um, you might see on social media, you might see more memes about tigers and cats. Okay. You just may pay, see in the news that kind of stuff about the animal of the year. And actually the clash animal for the year, because we have 12 animal signs mm-hmm. in the Chinese zodiac, the clash animal is the monkey. So you may also see things around apes and monkeys and chimpanzees and, you know, it's not just a monkey. It could just be all that particular component of the animal kingdom. 
could be, could be problematic. And the clash, so when we say a clash animal, the tiger and the monkey on the in the Chinese system are the exact opposite position. So they clash. Okay. And it's actually a very emotional clash. So it's just again, we're seeing this thing about emotions and people wondering what they're doing here and how to relate to people. And one of the other things that's super interesting about this year is, well, in Chinese metaphysics, we see lots of patterns and patterns sort of jump out and smack me in the face. (laughs) So one of the things that's super interesting about this year is the energy of each of the 12 months in 22 is the same energy that we will see in the coming 12 years. So- The energy of March of 22 is the same energy that we will see in 23. The energy of April 22 is the same energy we will see in 2024. So what I'm really encouraging people to do this year is to take note of the good stuff and the challenging stuff that happens each month, because it can give you a little bit of a precursor, a little preview, Mm -hmm. if you will, about what you might encounter in the following 12 years. So we're really creating a little bit of a ripple effect. So the things that you do this year are going to be really impactful. And actually, I made a little tracker for, for my clients, um, which I can make available in the show notes I was, for people to grab. That's funny you say that because I was just thinking about that, like, just from a personal perspective, I'm like, I think I'm going to want to make sure I journal and make sure that I stay on top of that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I made a manifest uh, manifestation mastery section of an essential guide I, I do each oh, that's year. Awesome. And um, it's really just helpful to pay attention to what happens this year yeah. so you can make a record of it. And then, you know, come 2028, you can look back and go, hmm, wonder what happened in October of 22. And that that month was the same. And maybe uh-huh. this will give me an indicator, like maybe something amazing happened. Maybe something really challenging happened. And so you can be prepared for it one way or another. Yeah. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds both exciting and a little like... Not scary. That's too much. Of a, but you know what I mean? Like, oh no, what yeah, if something yeah. challenging happens? <laughs> yeah. I mean, challenging doesn't have to be a bad thing. Right. But we don't, we, but if someone's going to get sick or if you're going to have a job change or if you're going to move home or something significant is going to happen, we don't want people to get sick. We don't want people to suffer. But if right. you, if you've already experienced it and you get an idea of the energy might be coming, yeah, then you can be prepared. You can take care of your health. If you think you want to maybe change jobs and you can be proactive about it instead of being at the effect of right. getting laid off or um, there being a significant change where there's a shift in your company um, where you can, you can be at, you can, you can drive the change instead of waiting for it to happen to right. you. And the reason for that is because we all have our own individual human energy that's based on our birthday. And then when the energy visits, uh, it will affect us one way or another, whether it's productive and, and supportive or whether it could be more challenging. And mm-hmm. if we know that in advance and we can plan, that's why we look at this stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you also mentioned in our pre-talk before today about top animal signs in Chinese astrology for the year. So I'm curious what you have to say on that. Yeah. So what we're talking about here is the four pillars of destiny, which is known as is Batsa, which is Chinese astrology. Um, and so I, earlier I mentioned, like, if you don't know your lucky directions, you can go to this calculator on my website. Um, it looks like Bazi, B-A-Z-I, but it's actually pronounced but Batsa. That, that, that's semantics. <laughs> anyway, um, you can go to the calculator and you can figure out what your animal signs are because it'll do it for you. So you put in your birthday and it generates a chart. Ba means eight and Tsa means characters. So you're really getting eight characters, which is why we call them the four pillars of destiny. And it's, it's kind of a guide for lack of a better compass, if you will, for lack of a better term to help you navigate your life because it helps you understand your personal potential and navigate the energy of the coming year. Somebody might be going, well, I might be a a Capricorn or I'm a Libra, you know, how is this different from Western astrology? An average Western astrology perspective from my understanding generates about 500 or so charts um, based on what we could observe in from Earth, mm-hmm. the planets, the stars. Whereas Chinese astrology is much more comprehensive because it has over 13 million variations. Oh, wow. Using all of the five elements and the polarity of yin and yang. Um, so you're really extremely unique. And the reason that we we say like, oh, who's got the best animal sign this year is because we want to know if we have <laughs> one of these animal signs in our charts, does this mean that I'm going to have a good year? What is potentially an animal sign that I could use to help 
if if I have one, if I have none, if I have four, if I have three. So that okay, you so have we can really have multiple in, within the chart. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have four. You have eight boxes in your chart. Gotcha. You have four. What are called stems, which are the um, Chinese characters for the five elements. And then you have the animal signs, which also carry an element. Okay. Um, but you could be born in the year of the dog with a born in a, um, a dragon month gotcha. and maybe born on a, a rabbit day and born at a tiger hour. Okay. Um, so you can certainly have different animal signs in your chart and the calculator will tell you. Um, so for this particular year, my opinion, and it's certainly an opinion, is that the horse, if the animal signs of the horse, the pig, the rabbit, and the rooster are some of the best signs to have this year. Partly because, well, the pig is the secret friend for the year. Oh. So we mentioned the tiger and we already mentioned the monkey have a clash relationship, and the secret friend is the pig. So if somebody is born in the year of the pig or a month, which is usually November, um, or a day or an hour of the pig, you have extra stars, extra energy that are coming to you that you can use. And it's really good, lucky energy oh. this particular year. Um, so if you don't have a pig in your chart, or if you have a tiger and your monkey in your chart and you want to make friends with a pig, you can borrow their luck. Oh, nice. <laughs> make, go make friends with somebody who has a pig in their chart and borrow their <laughs> luck. Collaborate with that person. Yeah. And also the rabbit is a, a good one for this year because it is the annual peach blossom star. Peach blossom star is great for attractive attractiveness, likability. Um, it also can indicate when a romance can occur. So if you are single and you're looking for a romance and you have a rabbit in your chart somewhere, it could be mm. that you might have a romance coming if you want one, right? If you're already in a relationship, then just go right. home. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go be with your partner and your spouse. <laughs> I like how you're like, just go home. <laughs> just go home. Yeah. But what you may find is if you have a peach blossom in your chart, you may find that people just want to talk to you. Like you'll be at the grocery store minding your own business and people are just really chatty with you. They want to connect with your energy because they find you likable and attractive. And mm -hmm. that's great. And it can be really useful for a business purpose. So if someone was born in a rabbit month, uh, it can really help with things like sales and networking and communicating with people. Um, if uh, or other any other really other business component, right? It just helps make you a little bit more likable. Nice. Um, yeah. So those are some of the the top. Those I can't go through all of them. But those right. Are some right. Of the top yeah. Ones that I really like. <laughs> yeah. Every time, like I think about the feng shui, and like I know somebody else who also does it, but I haven't really dug into it. But looking back on our past conversation and now hearing this one and other things that I've heard, like I keep getting the nudge, like I want to dig into this more, you know, like it's yeah, so yeah, interesting yeah. and there's so much to there's it. There's so like, much. Yeah, and yeah. I know I mentioned this in the last one, but it's just, you know, I think you can probably speak more on this, but I, I feel like probably your average person who doesn't really know anything about feng shui thinks it's just arranging your furniture in a certain way and that's it, you know? <laughs> but yeah. once you open up the conversation to find out how deep this actually goes and how much there is to it, mm -hmm. it's so fascinating. <laughs> and in, and the truth is that's how I started. I, I picked up a book that was like about moving your stuff and arranging your furniture okay. and the, I, the art of placement of things. And I just... And that, I mean, I admit that that's how I started. I read so many books on feng shui. Oh my God, I spent so much money reading books. And it really wasn't until I started to wake up to the deeper wisdom that is part of the classical perspective of feng shui that is really so beautiful. And that's really where the meat, and from my perspective, where the meat and the juicy stuff really is, because that's where the powerful formulas are. I mean, one of the myths that sometimes people will say is, like, I just had this conversation with my my existing client last week who said, someone told me I should put a tree over there in the corner. <laughs> and I just kind of had to look at him and be like, we're doing way more powerful stuff. And I was just kind of said, I'm like, if it was all about putting a, tr a tree in that corner of your room, like Jeff Bezos would have a sequoia tree right. in all of his homes. <laughs> like that's not even, it's just not real. And he kind of laughed, right? Like, it's kind of funny mm -hmm. when you think about that. Don't get me wrong. Plants are wonderful. They're great. They help oxygenate the environment. As long as they're pet friendly, you want to make sure they're pet friendly mm -hmm. plants. I mean, of course you want to bring the natural environment in, but make sure that you're doing it with the, for the right reason. Right. You know, if you want to have a tree, then put a tree, but don't say that that tree is going to make money fall out of the sky because that's right. not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just not how it works. Um, I did want to go back. Actually, there was something 
that popped into my head, and I'm just curious your thoughts on it, when you mentioned about the water tiger and then the wood and the oak tree, what came up for me was this idea of like getting grounded. Like, if I do you feel like maybe that might be a theme this year? Like if we're kind of settling in a little bit more and like finding our roots, figuring out our purpose, yeah. like that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great way to, I mean, I love that you're already jumping to that. Like that's excellent. <laughs> like, trees need to be watered, right? But they just don't need to be watered by the ocean. They need rain. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit out of balance in that mm-hmm. regard, but trees lay roots. So there's also this idea that trees um, are very competitive, but actually when you look at the underground root system, they actually support each other and oh. they give each other nutrients. That's something interesting and scientific. I never knew um, that. <laughs> yeah. And trees need a good solid um, foundation, but what's challenging is that um, this tree will take a long time to grow. Okay. So yes, yes, there's the optimism of growth and new things happening. And yes, it's the coming of spring and we love all of that. The challenge is that there's not a really suitable fire element. Fire, I mean, trees need sunshine to grow. And mm-hmm. the sunshine is not visible at the time of the day that the year begins. It begins at 4.52 in the morning. Okay. And then February 4th, like it's still dark, right? So there's no yeah. sunshine. There's no real fire element for the year. It's it's not so usable. So it's just going to take a long time for outcomes to be realized. And it happens to be that the year and the month pillar are the same. So remember how I said the month of March equals 23, the month Mm -hmm. of April equals 24. Well, the month of February when the year begins is the same as 22. So for the first six months or so, it may sort of feel the same. It's what's called fu yin in Chinese. Okay, Fu yin means nothing changes or it's stagnant. When that happens... So this is interesting. When that happens, everything becomes really still. Okay. One of the really, so when date selection, one of the really interesting things happening is that we have this very special date on February 18th at 327 in the morning. If any of you have a spiritual practice, this is a big opening point because this is when all of the pillars are the same. The year, the month, the day, and the hour, February 18th at 327 in the morning this year. They're all the pillars are identical. This is totally Fu Yin. And so this is, it's like the veil is really, really thin at that hour. Okay. It's a really good time to do spiritual practice. When we when this happens, we look at the I Ching and we go to the I Ching, which is known as the book of changes, to sort of get some information about what to expect. And it happens to be, this is also really interesting. I get excited about I this love stuff. This. <laughs> it happens to be that the I Ching indicates that the month of February this year is symbolized by the hexagram called unity. So it indicates an opening point for peace and safety and security and good health and progression and advancement. The hexagram itself is the trigram of earth over the trigram of heaven, which is mother and father and light and dark and man and woman. So it's this completion of yin and yang Um, And it's considered extremely auspicious, which is why people who have a spiritual practice and are willing to get up at that hour (laughs) or stay up and do some meditation, um, whatever your spiritual practice is, it's a really good time to do it. It helps you open up your path, um, take the first step toward this new beginning to create your future. Be thinking about how you can, what you want to manifest over really over the next 12 years. It's not just 12 months. You can be thinking about what you want to create for yourself, how you want your life to be, what you want to transcend. You don't want to go after change, chasing things that are unattainable. Mm-hmm. But if you can have at least a little something that you want to do for yourself, for your life, for your business, for your family, uh, moving forward, you can start manifesting at that, at that time. It's a beautiful opening point. That's awesome. And I've been challenging myself and for the most part doing pretty well at getting up not that early, <laughs> but earlier <laughs> now that both of my kids tend to sleep through the nights. So I'm actually feeling a little bit like, I think I can do that. Like I'll probably go just back one, to bed afterwards, morning. but I think yeah, I can yeah, do that yeah. one day. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, and may, and maybe you wake up at three, so it's 327, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe you wake up at three, t- 310 or 315 and, you know, wipe the grogginess out of your eyes, get a beverage. And, and, you know, you're already tired, right? Because you're just waking up, but then then you go into a meditative state because your body's almost already there anyway. And maybe you plan in advance. Maybe mm-hmm. you do some writing or some journaling. Maybe you do some collage work. 
Um, everybody manifests a little bit different. So maybe for you, it's speaking something out loud. Maybe it's um, writing something down. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe it's calling in, and for those who have a spiritual practice, maybe it's calling in spirit guides, angels, whatever it is for you that you you tap into that you Mm -hmm. can use for support and and get that process started. Yeah. So is it... Is it 327 regardless of what time zone you're in? Right. So it's where okay. you are because it, it, right? Like I'm in Phoenix. So 327, my time is going to be 527 mm-hmm. East Coast, but you want to do it at 327 your time. So Got it. when you're okay. doing it at 327, I'm still sleeping. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to be sure. So if anyone was yes. wondering about, you know, do I have to do a time zone shifter or anything like that. Yeah, this is what I know. You do have to do it at your time because this okay. the energy aligns at that time. And this is what I've told a couple of my colleagues who do a lot of spiritual practice and lead groups and things. I'm like, well, you can do it, but only it's only going to be meaningful to the people in your time zone if they're doing it with you at that time. Otherwise okay. they have to wait and do it when it, when it hits their time zone. Okay. Got yeah. it. Okay. Awesome. I did want to ask, I was just curious I think we briefly talked about it last time, but I don't remember exactly what the result was. And I was, I know I wondered about like, would you ever want to shift? Like just if we're talking specifically about like the furniture or like the directions in your house, like would you ever want to rearrange or adjust? And if so, like for this year, is that something that we would want to do to like realign the energy or change things a little bit? Yes. Yes. So if people are wondering, right, like why certain years are really great and some whys are extremely bad, (laughs) the reason for that is because um, of a system called flying stars. Flying stars is very popular because it, it is energy that is specific to a certain period of time. So what are really the feng shui of your space, your home, your office is affected by these annual energetic influences. So what are flying stars? This is a system of calculating how energy moves and behaves. And because it works quickly compared to other methods in feng shui, it's very popular to talk about each year. Stars are unseen energy and that behave in very distinct waves that are very predictable um, based on the environment that it's in. So when we say an annual flying star, as the name implies, it exerts its influence only for one year. Okay. It happens to be that the energy for energy placement for this year is the same as the lo shu, which is one of the tools that we use in feng shui, um, which basically means that the flying stars are going to their home palaces, their home 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 sectors, if you will. Okay. Um, so that means they're pretty comfortable. They're like, hey, I'm hanging out with good friends. I'm back <laughs> in my home place. I feel really good. If the exterior environment supports the energy of that star, and so the the stars, there are uh, nine of them. Uh, star one is, well, they're identified by numbers and elements and they have a behavior and they have a lot of characteristics and attributes that go with them. So I want to go through them just so that you know what they are. Star one is um, known as a noble people star. Star two is known as a sickness star. Star three can sometimes bring arguments. Star four is known for romance, travel, education. Star five is known as a misfortune star. Star six is known for career and authority. Star seven can sometimes bring robbery uh, or dispute. Star eight is for current wealth. So we call it the current money star. And star nine is future wealth. And so all of these stars have elements that are associated with them. And in the essential um, guide that I was mentioning earlier with the manifestation section, the essential packet that I'll, we'll make available to everybody that they can download for free shows all the stars and all the elements. And the thing to do is to go to the BOTSA calculator, know what your own life star is. When you know what your own life star is, you can then see how it behaves and how it connects with the flying star element. Okay. So if your life star is star nine, which is a fire element, which is great because that's also future money, um, you're the star that or the energy that produces you is wood because wood, you put wood on a fire to make sure. it grow, okay. right? So you would want to then identify the stars three and four, which are wood element stars and use those for the year. If you need education, if you need resource, if you need something to strengthen you, then star three and four are going to be really helpful. And the essential guide will tell you where that is. 
um, it, star three is in the east and star four is in the southeast this year. And so what that means is if I'm a, a gua nine or star nine person, I want to spend time in the east and the southeast areas of my home so that I can benefit from the energy of that star. Okay. That's how you use it. It's very simple. It doesn't, and the guide will tell you if I'm a gua two, I should use these sectors. If I'm a gua okay. four, I should use these sectors. The guide tells you, I mean, you don't have to think about it too hard. Awesome. So sometimes it's direction, right? The lucky directions are one aspect and the location, the sector of your home okay. is another aspect of it. So you can use both of them together. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. So, so fascinated. Every time like we open up a new page, I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be more difficult than that. Mm-hmm. You should use rooms with auspicious stars. Make those your bedrooms, your office, your study. I mean, so many people are working from home these days. Choose an office with a star that's favorable for you. If if that's not possible because you have a small space, then at least open up a window or open up a door in that in that area so that you can let the energy in more frequently. If if you can't use a star that is is something that is so beneficial, choose something that is also something you control, right? So what you control is your money element. So for example, fire controls metal, right? So we use star nine as an example. So if somebody is a gua nine or a star nine person in their life star, what you control, fire controls metal. Could be if you get metal, you have to forge it, right, in fire mm-hmm. in order to make it a useful tool. So fire controls metal. So metal becomes your your money. It's what you control is your money. Okay. So then you would use a, a sector like seven or six, star seven or star six, in order to have um, more help with money. Awesome. Well, oh my God. I, I'm I'm just as fascinated by this as you are. <laughs> like this is so cool. <laughs> I get excited about it. It doesn't take much. There are some things that are negative. I mean, I will say there are some feng shui things that people should know about that are a little bit negative that we want to avoid. So okay. the things that we want to avoid are called the annual afflictions. Um, these are the things you generally want to stay away from. They're called the Grand Duke, the Three Killings. And the year breaker. So we already said the year of the tiger is the most important energy of the year. This is what's called the Grand Duke. It's the Emperor Star. It's also known as the Tai Sui. And in the in the compass and the Feng Shui compass, it's actually northeast sector. And the direct opposite of that. So the Grand Duke is the tiger, which is northeast three. For those anybody who does classical Feng Shui, it's northeast three. That's the most important energy of the year. The direct opposite of that is the monkey, because we already said that's the clash position. Mm-hmm. That's what's known as the year breaker. So okay. uh, essentially, if you can avoid it, you don't want to really be traveling in the direction of Northeast three, because you don't want to look at the emperor. You also don't want to be sitting in that direction. So if somebody's a Westlife group person and they go, oh, I'll use Northeast to sit in that direction. Actually, for this year, you kind of don't. Okay. You really want to, you can sit with the um, the emperor behind you so you can face Southwest, um, but you just don't really want to look at the Northeast, that specific sector, that little tiny little bit uh, too much. And then I also, really got to change the direction I sit for my podcast. <laughs> are you sitting Northeast? Yeah. You just yeah. want to just tweak it a little bit, you know. <laughs> Especially if you're an East Life Group person, I would choose East this year for you. Okay. Go, you know, you probably don't have far to go actually, because one degree is an inch. So you okay. just little tweak. <laughs> and your your mobile device will tell you, right? Oh. We all have a compass on our mobile device. Just, I never use you know, the compass point, on my phone. <laughs> I just forgot grab that your was mobile even a device. Thing. There's a compass app, and it'll you know point it in the direction that you're facing, and it'll tell you, okay. you know what it is. I may have put the compass in a folder I created and labeled annoying apps I can't delete. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. I know. I use mine all the time. I think I have a half a dozen that I can't delete that just Uh sit there. But yeah, but this is one once or twice a year you'll want to pull out your compass. Okay. Yeah. So the other annual affliction that we want to avoid is the north, generally all of the north has the three killings. And essentially in these three areas, you don't want to break ground. You don't want to do any renovations. You don't want to do any repairs in these areas because what happens is you, you disturb these negative energies and they get trapped and they start to misbehave and (laughs) and upset your life in ways that are unexpected and are generally pretty negative. So no, no renovation in the Northeast, no renovation in the Southwest, no renovation in the North this year. If you catch this before February 4th, get it done before then. Okay. After February 4th, you just have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you do accidentally 
some, I mean, it happens, right? People activate negative stuff all the time. Then you call for help because there are things that we can use to, to help remedy the situation. Okay. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, not because we have it in our plans, but we eventually hope to move and, you know, we're considering, we don't know if we'll build when we do move on, but if someone is maybe building a house this year, does that fall into that same idea where like, or is it just, if you have an existing space, you don't want to mess with that? Most, so the answer is both, right? Okay. So yeah, if you're building something, then you're probably going to trigger something negative as, okay. you, as you build the walls and you put the roof on and you, of course you're going to, you're going to capture something negative. It almost can't be avoided. Okay. These poor repair construction people are kicking up negative stuff all the time. So I feel bad for them <laughs> with some regularity. So some of that cannot be avoided, right? If you, unless you are proactive about it, right? So if you're proactive okay. about it, there's something that we can do using advanced formulas to use date selection, breaking ground in the right spot to begin, orienting your property in a very specific way. This is what you do for building a dream home, right? This sure. is all of the juicy wealth formulas and the amazing uh, resources and time-tested methods that are part of classical feng shui, which is what I subscribe to and the work that I do. Um, but generally what ends up happening is someone will go, oh, well, my water heater was in the North and it leaked and we had to tear up the floor. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden you've, you have to repair the, all the whole North part of your basement. And there's nothing that you can do about that. Right. right. Then, then, cause you've got to repair it, but mm-hmm. then it's negative, other negative stuff starts to happen and you, then you call and you go, why is all this weird stuff happening? And then we, then we do some other stuff to remedy it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good to know. Yes. All right. Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you think would be important in regards to this year? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's helpful to look at your own chart, right? Look at your own four pillars destiny chart and see what your animal signs are. See if you can identify an imbalance of elements. Like maybe when you look at your chart, you see that there's a lot of blue for water element, or you see that there's a lot of uh, gray for metal element or a lot of brown for earth element. And then thinking about the energy that's coming in, we're getting a lot of extra water element. So does your chart need more water element? If it does not need more water element, then you might need some support using the right rooms and feng shui. Um, and this is really how you put it together. This is this is the key is to sort of mm-hmm. figure out what is the good stuff that you need? What's the stuff that is perhaps more challenging? And then finding in feng shui the sort of the keystone that puts it all together so that you can have a better year and you get in the slipstream of better energy. And the other thing that people can be doing is if if you're catching this before February 4th is you can start preparing now. So it's great to deal with your clutter before Chinese New Year and start to open up and create some space for all the new energy that's coming in. You want to um, clean your house, you know, get behind baseboards and couches and TVs mm-hmm. and refrigerators and, you know, really get in there and do some deep cleaning. Yeah, I see a lot of I just, I see a lot of uh, declutter challenges going on right now, actually. So, <laughs> right, right. And it's not even really because it's Chinese New Year. They just go, oh, it's January. Oh, yeah. Declutter. Yep. Yeah. But really, like, it's actually part of, it's very cultural. The millions of people all over are going to be celebrating Chinese New Year. And around now, they're starting to clean their houses. Mm-hmm. It's also good if you think that you may be running into a challenge <clears throat> this year or something that is significant that's going to change. You may want to do some charitable work. You may want to, um, do, do some good deeds, make some donations. It, um, I know I happen to know that there's like a blood supply shortage. If you are in a position where you can donate blood, that is really wonderful because you're actually, you're total, you're literally giving your chi mm-hmm. because it's part of your body, right? You're literally, and that can actually be extremely helpful. Volunteer if you can, you know, if you can't donate blood, if you can volunteer in advance, check your house and make sure there's nothing broken, right? No leaks, no leaks. We don't want anything leaking, no broken windows. Make sure your appliances are in good, you know, repair. And you'd be checking those sectors that I mentioned before to see if there's anything that needs to be fixed now, right? Mm -hmm. Like our house sits north. So that means our whole backyard is in the north. And so I said to my husband, like, no, we're not doing any landscaping this year. It's like, that's not <laughs> happening. If you want it, if you want something changed, like we need to do it now. And I don't mean mild gardening, right? I mean, like, mm-hmm. you know, taking huge swaths of land. Like, yeah, you're going to sure. garden. Like, you know, look, you know, your lettuce, your herbs, you know, that's fine. I mean, like massive landscaping yeah. is not going to happen this year, <laughs> right? 
Um, check the Northeast, check the Southwest, make sure that those areas are clean and free of clutter. And so the energy can really flow. It really is helpful to just sort of be looking around like, do I have a pile of stuff here on the landing going up the stairs? Get, set, set here. thing that you can do is set a timer for 10 minutes. Just give yourself 10 minutes. It's amazing what you can accomplish in 10 minutes if mm-hmm. you put your mind to it. Oh, I'm going to tackle that pile for 10 minutes. And if you do one of those every couple of days before Chinese New Year, you're going to be in really great shape. My issue is that if I get started, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> give yourself 20 minutes, right. 10 minutes. Like that's fine. I saw um, one of the declutter challenge memes I see going around, like was breaking it down, like one area of your house to tackle for each day in January. And I thought that was really helpful actually to be like, okay, I, today I just have to focus on this. Like maybe that could be helpful because for me, yeah. I, it was probably a couple months ago now, but I had this random spurt of energy I think it aligned with something else that was going on <laughs> energetically, but I just, I got this burst. I was just going to clean like one or two things and it literally turned into like deep cleaning almost the entire house. My kids and I, I like I took my kids, I should have been getting them ready for bed, but I got them in their pajamas and then we went to Home Depot because I needed to get something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we can do this in a half hour. We'll come back home. You guys go to bed and mommy yeah, yeah, will finish yeah. cleaning. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. I mean, it's great. It, you never know where that's going to lead. But yeah. we we here in the United States, we have a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. We have a we have way more stuff than in other countries, partially because in general, at least in suburban America, our houses are disproportionately large and we have space and we there is a psychological component to having stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that everybody should be minimalist. I'm not. I have things that I <laughs> keep from my childhood, but I also have learned that I don't, there's stuff that I just have been carrying around for years that I just don't need. Yeah. I put it in a box. I put a date on it. If I don't open it for six months, I don't, it's not a need. Yeah. I've not really shown myself that it's something that I need to keep in my life and maybe somebody else can use it. Mm-hmm. And I also am aware that I have, I'm blessed with enough abundance in my life that if I need something, I can take care of it. Yeah. I don't, I don't need to hold on to it. That psychological issue of, well, maybe I'll need it someday. Yeah. But oh, when I, I haven't used it this in there. 10 years, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll use it in the next, you know, a couple right. months. <laughs> like, no, you haven't right. used it in 10 years. What, what makes you think you're going to use it in the next two months? <laughs> right. And also like if you shove it in a closet and you put it in a box and you're not using it, what makes you think you're going to use it? It's shoved in a box. Right. Like you're, you're not using it. That's a very, and some, for some people might be like, I can't do that. Oh, I can't get rid of it. We do have to address the emotions around Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, And so be gentle with yourself, give yourself a little bit of grace, but also I really encourage people to make space um, for the stuff that's coming. Like I'm looking, you cannot see me, but I'm looking in my office and I can see a pile of books that are, I have earmarked for donation because they've been sitting there for a few months and I have not read them. Mm -hmm. And uh, clearly I'm not going to read them. So therefore somebody else can be blessed with them and I can give them away. And, you know, even the best of us, you know, even us feng shui people, (laughs) we (laughs) all have our own, everybody has something, which is why we use feng shui. Um, So we're all guilty of it. We're all human. We live in our homes we have stuff. That's okay. And let's be conscious of making space. Mm -hmm. I also really quick, I saw something about, um, you know, if you're hanging on to something out of guilt, like it was, you know, a family heirloom or something, you feel like yeah. you have to hang on to it right. or it's, you know, something from your childhood or something like, right. like that. Uh, like, my aunt's going to come over and if she doesn't see yeah. the trinket that she gave me for Christmas <laughs> on the mantle, she'll be really hurt and I'm going to feel guilty. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So it's like if you're just hanging on to it out of guilt and you wouldn't actually buy it if you saw it on a shelf you know, take a picture of it. Like I I did that one of the last times I went through a whole bunch of my stuff. Like I, I finally got okay with taking a picture of something that I wanted to remember, but I didn't need to physically hang on to. Yeah. So, and, it, and it felt very freeing actually to finally get rid of some of those things. Like, okay, I'll remember it because I have the picture, but I, now I can like, I don't have to find a storage space for it, you know, because I'm not right. going to pull this out and display it, you know? <laughs> yes. For sure. And there's also electronic cluttering too. Like how many newsletters do you subscribe to that you don't actually read? Can you don't you want to see my inbox, inbox right now. 
<laughs> yeah, I did that over the holidays. I was like, I don't need this. I get this in my inbox with regularity. And I even unsubscribed from a few and they didn't, they didn't stop. <laughs> so you may have to go back and think about their, mm-hmm. you know, some like I know. I'm not going to name any specific names. I know your company. You've been around my whole life. Like I know where to find you. Yeah. You just send me three emails a week. I know right. if I need you, I know where to find you. Yeah. It can help free up some space just in your mind and mm-hmm. in your awareness um, as well. Just getting rid of some of that electronic yeah. stuff too. Yay. Well, awesome. This has been really fun. I'm I'm so glad that you came back so we could have one more conversation and I don't know, maybe, maybe we can make this an annual thing. You know, we can make it an year. annual yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> next year will certainly be interesting for sure. Um, with things moving and changing with COVID and coronavirus and that's a whole other topic of its own. Right. Uh, you know, we'll see where things go. Mm-hmm. So check out my website, Feng Shui in Motion. The website is fsinmotion.com. You can get the free Batsa calculator where you can get your life star, your free Chinese astrology chart using that uh, little free service on my website. And do grab the Chinese uh, New Year essential guide on my website. It has all the details that we talked about here with the flying stars and the animal signs so you can have the best year yet. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jillian. Thanks for having me. Okay, well, that was fun. I seriously do feel like we should make this a yearly thing because that was really fun. I love looking at the year ahead and kind of, you know, having a little inside (laughs) peek at what could happen so you know what to prepare for, how to align your energy, what you maybe need to focus on, what you need to stay away from. This was perfect. I'm so glad we were able to have Jillian back. So please make sure that you check the show notes so that you can visit her website and get all of those freebies that she talked about and maybe even work with her one-on-one if you feel so called. And of course, I always want to invite you into my Facebook group, The Energy Within. I was briefly thinking while Jillian was talking about February 18th at 3.27 a.m. I'm like, wow, if I can get my butt out of bed, maybe we'll do a Reiki session. But then knowing that (laughs) it's really only the most beneficial when it's in your own time zone, (laughs) I'll just send you a nice reminder inside the group that 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 day and time is coming up so that you can do whatever practice, ritual, meditation, whatever you feel called to do to help you manifest what you want to manifest. So it's one day. It's one day. You can get up at 327. You can go back to bed a few minutes later. (laughs) So hop inside the Energy Within Facebook group. Reach out. uh, Visit my website if you would like to schedule a Reiki session or book an Oracle card reading. And absolutely, again, please make sure that you visit Jillian's website and take advantage of all of the freebies. If you enjoyed this episode, if you found it helpful, Jillian and I both would love if you would share it, tag us, and let us know what you enjoyed, what stuck out to you, and maybe even what questions you might have. Do a screenshot, do a screen flow, share it, and don't forget the tag. Thank you so much, as always, for being here, and I'll see you next time.